Hello everyone, welcome back to the subject electromagnetic field theory. Here we are in the last video of chapter number 6 that is capacitance. Up till now in this chapter we have gone through the parallel plate capacitor. We have seen the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. How much energy can be stored into that parallel plate capacitor. So we have solved problems on such situations on that particular topic followed by the capacitance of transmission lines like coaxial cable and two wire transmission line. We have also used the method of field sketches to estimate the value of capacitance when only one coordinate system is not sufficient into the engineer application to estimate the capacitance value. We have seen the popularity of Poisson's and Laplace equation to find the capacitance value. We have found the solution in one dimensional, two dimensional problems for Laplace and Poisson's equation with some examples and solve certain problem statements based on to them also. In this video, we are provided the volume charge density for a specified region inside and outside with some boundary and we are asked to determine the potential as well as the electric field intensity everywhere. So let us see the details of problem number 3. So here we have the problem statement. A uniform volume charge has a constant density rho v is equal to rho 0 coulomb per meter cube and fills the region r less than a in which a permittivity epsilon has assumed. A conducting spherical sheet, spherical shell is located at r equal to a and is held at ground. Fine, we have two parts, the potential everywhere and in part b, the electric field intensity E bar everywhere. After reading this problem statement, the attention goes to the condition that is R less than A, R equal to A. See, R we just encounter into the spherical coordinates, the radius of spherical surface and of course here a spherical shell is given to us and that is located at R equal to A. So, R less than A is inside the spherical shell and R greater than A we can say it is outside the spherical shell and R equal to A it means we are on to the spherical surface. Now what is given to us? We are given the uniform volume charge having a constant density that is rho v is equal to rho 0 what we generally used to take as the maximum volume charge density in terms of coulomb per meter cube in the region R less than A. So it means inside a conducting spherical shell they lies rho v is equal to rho 0 coulomb per meter cube. Further it is said that it has a permittivity of epsilon. Now with this situation let us draw first of all the diagram. So in this diagram I show you a spherical shell. So a spherical shell will be centered at r equal to 0 I say. The sphere can be shown like this spherical shell. The radius of the sphere here it is A. So inside the spherical shell this is the region R less than A onto the spherical shell this is R equal to A and outside it is R greater than A. So this spherical shell is a conducting body or conducting boundary surface you can see. Now inside we have rho v is equal to rho 0 coulomb per meter cube and permittivity epsilon. Now we have gone through the Poisson's equation and Laplace equation. Poisson's equation is applicable when we have certain charge distribution over the entire volume under consideration. So the closed surface is a spherical surface and inside that the volume charge density means charge distribution over the volume is given to us. So we can be able to apply Poisson equation here. Now we are asked to find out the potential everywhere that means inside the sphere and outside the sphere onto the surface also you can say and the electric field intensity everywhere. So for determining potential and electric field intensity we will be taking help from Poisson's equation and Laplace equation. 
Now outside the boundary of the spherical surface, there it is not mention of any kind of volume charge density. Hence, rho v is equal to zero here. Further, the spherical shell is also held at ground. That means the potential at this particular boundary v is equal to zero also. So outside r equal to a region, inside r uh, r greater than a and r less than a. We have to think about the potential. What is it? And electric field intensity. What is it? So let us begin to solve. So as the given data is of spherical shell, hence we take the spherical coordinate system into consideration and we take the Poisson's equation first of all applicable r less than a region. So it will be del square v is equal to minus rho v upon epsilon. So as per the given symbol notations, I make it del square v is equal to minus rho 0 upon epsilon. We are supposed to find v here. We have rho 0, we have epsilon. Hence, I take the Laplacian of v first of all. In the spherical coordinate system, we have the three parameters r, theta and phi. But we consider the variation of potential v radially outward. Hence, with respect to the r only, with respect to the theta and with respect to the phi, we may be finding the equipotential surfaces. Hence, I take the differentiation with respect to r only. So, the left hand side will be 1 upon r square in place of del del r, I put ddr and here it is r square dv by dr. So this is the expansion of Laplacian of v into the spherical coordinate system. Rhs will be as it is minus rho 0 upon epsilon. So to determine what is capital V, we have to integrate it twice as this is the second order differential. Hence, integrating v on for integrating uh, onto the both hand sides, we have to obtain v. So, it is a function of r and that we have obtained that is minus rho sub x 0 r square upon 6 times epsilon 0 plus c1 upon r plus c2. For integrating twice, we obtained the two constants c1 and C2. Now we obtain, uh, we have to obtain what is C1 and C2 that are in the expression of V. So for that purpose, we put the condition V to be a finite in the sphere as R tends to 0, it means at the origin. Therefore, C1 will be equal to 0. Next, V0, V is equal to 0 at R is equal to A, that means onto the spherical shell. As already stated that the spherical shell is held at ground, is held at ground. So, this condition gives us that C2, this implies C2 is equal to rho 0 a square upon 6 epsilon. So this is the condition for all r less than a that means inside the spherical surface. For r greater than a that means outside the sphere we will be taking the help from Laplace equation because outside the sphere there is no rho v, rho v is equal to 0 hence Instead of Poisson's equation del square v is equal to minus rho v upon epsilon, we shift to del square v is equal to 0. So this is the Laplace equation. For Laplace equation, the left hand side we solve Laplacian del square v is equal to again with respect to the r only, hence 1 upon r square ddr in bracket r square dv by dr as there is no concern of theta and phi. So this will be equal to 0 in right hand side. So here also we have to integrate twice and we obtain 
phi of r is equal to c1 upon r plus c2. This way we obtain two constants after definite integrals c1 and c2. So here we require the values of these two constants c1 and c2. Now onto the spherical shell it is already grounded. Outside the spherical shell there is no rho v. Rho v is equal to 0. No charge it is there. Hence we can put the condition v is equal to 0 at r equal to a and r equal to let us see infinity or r greater than a. Hence we can have c1 and c2 equal to 0. Hence we can summarize the potential field at r greater than a. So we can write v as a function of r. So for r greater than a is 0 and for r less than a also we shall be writing here. So rho 0 upon 6 epsilon in bracket a square minus r square or r it is less than a. So this is the summarized representation of potential. This is the required answer for part A. In the problem statement, we were asked to find the potential everywhere. Hence, both the conditions are less than n and are equal to a we have given. As r equal to a, there it is the spherical surface. So spherical surface is of conducting material. So it is also equal to 0. 0 at r equal to a. That is a given thing. Now let us focus on to the part b. So for part b, we have to go for determination of electric field intensity. So again, we take the help of the relation between the potential and the electric field intensity that relationship is E bar is equal to minus grad phi that is minus potential uh, potential gradient is nothing but the electric field intensity. So with respect to the R only as it is of first order derivative we make it minus sign first of all dV by dr and as the gradient is a vector we put AR cap as the unit vector. So we substitute V here. So it will be rho 0 r upon 3 times epsilon ar cap and this is for r less than a. Outside the r greater than a, outside the spherical shell as v is equal to 0. So this implies there is no electric field intensity. Electric field intensity is also equal to 0. So we were asked to find electric field intensity everywhere. So R less than A condition, we have electric field intensity by rho 0 R upon thrice epsilon AR cap in volts per meter and E equal to 0 volts per meter for R greater than A. At R equal to A also, electric field intensity is 0. So with this problem statement, we are finished with chapter number 6, capacitance. I hope you have understood all the concepts right from parallel plate capacitor to Poisson's and Laplace equation. In the subsequent lecture, we are going to start with the new chapter with the title steady magnetic fields, which is the second part of our subject that is electromagnetic field. The title electromagnetic field holds two terms, electric field and magnetic field. So we are finished with electric field right now. Magnetic field we will be starting with and later on we will be seeing the togetherness of electric field and magnetic field in the form of electromagnetic wave. Now for getting more information onto our subject electromagnetic field theory, you can subscribe to EKEDA channel. Thank you.